I read a book when I was nine and started making plans and started construction at 15. The average depth of the ocean is 14,000 feet. If you think of inner space as the portion of the world that is deep, dark ocean that has never seen the sunlight, you're actually talking about more than 90% of the living area for the whole planet is water so deep it's never seen the sun. And more people in the history of all humanity have left this dock to go into that environment than from any other single location. You gotta be kidding me, man. Wow. <laughs> all right, guys, it's another day and I wanted to show you something super cool that's available here that you won't find anywhere else in the world. So we are at a place called the uh, Royal Time Institute of the Deep Sea Exploration, all right? And they have something here you won't find in any other island. It's uh, one of one. And uh, we have the owner here. He's gonna explain to us what we're looking at. But man, I guess you can tell what it is right here. This reminds me of uh, the movie where Samuel Jackson was in. <laughs> I think it was called Deep. Uh, it was a shark yeah, movie. Yeah. And he's like right there, and then the shark just <laughs> eats him. Uh, this is Carl right here. Nice to meet you, Carl. Yeah. So, uh, how long you been living here? Uh, I moved here in 1998. Right, right. Yeah. And this is uh, my second sub. I built both of them myself. Right. And this one is made of three high strength steel spheres and regularly takes people to 2,000 foot. In fact, uh, I went 2,000 feet yesterday and the day before that. And the passengers sit up here. That window, it's four inches thick. Wow. And so it distorts your view, but uh, the bench seat in there is actually four and a half foot across. The hole that you pass through is two feet wide. And uh, so the passengers are sitting up there and I'm standing in the back driving. So I have the more uh, situational awareness. However, the passengers are get the better view. I use these rubber bumpers regularly uh, to pivot off the wall. Almost everything out there is vertical because we're on the edge of the Cayman Trench. And, you know, if you can imagine like an animal and pivoting it on the bumper and your face can be a foot or two from what it is that you're looking at. Nice, nice, nice. What, what got you um, into submarines? I read a book when I was nine. And <laughs> started making plans and started construction at 15. All your life, man. Yep, my whole life. That's awesome, man. And and this is the byproduct of uh, uh, uh your effectuation. And so you 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 called it I Ida Bell. That's the named after the town in Oklahoma where it was built, which uh is a unique name. It was named by the train conductor who had two daughters, one Ida and one Bell. And he had promised them both to name a town after him. And he dumped, you know, killed two birds with one stone, naming the town Ida Bell. Um, but the people there, it's a very rural, isolated area. Uh, to give you an idea, like me working on this made the front page of their county paper six times. Wow. Like, not a lot is going on there. And so everybody knew about it and people were amazingly supportive. Uh, like just blow your mind support like here's a key to my shop let yourself in any time use whatever you need like really supportive and uh it's also like a little bit of a historical reference because the first sub that went to the bottom of the marianas trench was also supported by a town trieste in italy and also uh the spirit of st louis uh lindbergh's plane received support from the city and actually he completed that historic flight on the same day that my birthday is so there's like multiple levels of why it made sense yes. to go with that name yeah awesome from when i started working on it to when it was down here doing dives was just under two years however there have been so many modifications in terms of hours spent and money spent that was not even the halfway point it's it's evolved a lot uh, in July, it will be 20 years old. And if you saw a picture of it 20 years ago, it doesn't, the pressure hull has stayed the same, but everything else has basically been 
redone multiple times. It's evolved a lot. Is uh, is there more room for improvements, or you're okay? Yeah, with it? but I'm uh, I'm getting uh, pretty happy with with where it's at. I mean, it's uh, you know the bumpers carbon fiber, the viewports titanium, the everything's been upgraded to the best of the best. Yeah. Most submarines are, are military. People okay. have spent a thousand times more hours in the deep ocean buzzing around on a military vehicle with no windows clueless about their surroundings than they have actually moving slowly close to the bottom with windows and lights and actually doing science or research or filming or anything other than a military deterrent this would technically be called a submersible okay and there are only approximately 100 vehicles like this in the world and this is the deepest diving one in the western hemisphere that has a permanent base of operations there nice. used to be uh, two in hawaii and two in florida and they uh they stopped operating years ago and there's one that goes out of uh, massachusetts alvin that discovered the titanic but I mean, they're ship-based, so they're not doing a lot of diving in that one location. The average depth of the ocean is 14,000 feet. If you think of inner space as the portion of the world that is deep, dark ocean that has never seen the sunlight, you're actually talking about more than 90% of the living area for the whole planet is water so deep it's never seen the sun and more people in the history of all humanity have left this dock to go into that environment than from any other single location you gotta be kidding me man no, yeah. <laughs> yo you mentioned national geographic came here to uh them animal planet discovery uh there's an article coming out in harper's magazine july uh that's uh, one of the biggest articles that has been done on this operation in years. Uh, it was an outside magazine. It's, I've given a TED talk, a Google talk. Uh, it, you know, I've had a lot of scientists that they, they come and they dive with me and they spent their entire career studying the deep ocean and everything now is being done by robots. The one time they physically got into the deep ocean and saw it with their own face was here. And their reaction to solid. Yeah, of course they, you know, they spent their whole life <laughs> studying it and only saw it once in person. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, man. That, that is awesome. So, for someone who's interested in coming here and um, you offer tours, right? Correct. That's my main business is uh, the public's access to the deep water. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, what type of packages you could talk about? Most of my customers now, they're, they're coming specifically to go in the sub to to Honduras um, from you know every year dozens of different countries uh, most of them do a four-hour dive which allows us allows us to get to 2,000 feet but also we go a mile away and into an area with fantastic deep water coral nice nice yeah what what, what type of uh, other things we might be able to see once you get to 300 feet you that's the end of photosynthesis and so Basically, the ecosystem is completely different than what scuba divers can see. Literally, just going to 500 feet, I can tell a scuba diver who has made 5,000 scuba dives, money back guarantee, 100 animals you've never seen before in your life. Wow. Because it's a different world already. But then, when you get below 1,700 feet, now you're into total darkness and again everything changes oh man so can you describe one thing that uh you can't explain i'm sure you've um, seen i mean i got that book with pictures uh, yeah you have yeah. some <laughs> he has some books man oh man so i have more sightings of uh this shark than anybody that's ever lived i've only seen it about 50 times and the only images that i've seen of that of any quality were taken from my vehicle. If you go to the Wikipedia article for that shark, they actually, I think they have that exact picture. And uh, there's another encyclopedia of sharks. Right. The previous edition, they didn't even have a good picture. They had to go off a drawing. And they contacted me and, hey, we want to use one of your photos. I was like, well, I want 
my website on the photo they're like we can't do that i'm like do you have another option <laughs> like <laughs> like yeah, there right. was like literally i have the best pictures of that there's actually a lot of uh there's another little side business just selling video clips of some of the animals i've seen okay like for example the uh dumbo octopus there's uh a 3d uh children's book of deep sea life i've seen this before it, it, it might have been my image wow yeah oh man yeah they showed well they i think they featured that in one of uh i seen it in a documentary uh -huh. and they featured it's like this is not something you normally see in uh that's one of the most popular clips that uh is being sold through ocean footage and uh these are uh, deep water corals. That's big. That, these starfish are more than a foot in diameter. Wow. Uh, that's a fish that can live over 200 years old. And these are six scale sharks that are almost definitely the most abundant large wild animal left on our planet. Uh, they're found globally except the far north and south pole. And can get 18 feet long that has a horse leg in its mouth and that has the entire front corner of the submarine in its mouth <laughs> right there yes oh man yeah just trying to test it out to see if it's well we had we had fish tied to the bumper and it was oh, okay it got a little rough with us oh man that's amazing and man. this is uh sea lilies or stocked crinoids and they are one of the oldest life forms still on the planet they're in the fossil record 500 million years for comparison the dinosaurs were only 65 million years ago okay and once you get below 500 feet they're all over the place but wow. nobody saw one alive with their own eyes until 1972 so all this uh is kind of happening pretty quick in terms of people's ability to access the deep ocean the book i read was when i was nine okay Excuse me, and I started building at 15. Um, it, I mean, the, the cost of the raw ingredients, the, 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 I built the first sub for only about $20,000. Okay, guys, and let me show, is this the first sub? Yeah. So he has a picture, look at, the, I guess this is him right here. Yeah. Um, getting to work, and wow, and then I end up becoming this. But that was, uh, that made over 550 dives, and most of them with paying tourists and <coughs> between that collecting seashells and a treasure this is used as starting off a wow. treasure hunting stit i did in cuba uh funded the construction of the new sub get out of here did you find anything nah, you, not that i was getting paid by the day <laughs> right but uh i there's a lot of sand comes out of havana harbor but the i, I, I was there for six months doing search patterns and everything that's in front of Havana between 150 and 500 foot for two miles to either side I saw. Wow, looking for treasure. Yeah. Wow, man. That's awesome, man, that's awesome. And so um, so you have a way of picking up the stuff with you, the- You can put a net on uh, and scoop it up. The whole sub is very maneuverable. Man, you never get uh, worried about being so deep. Could you describe your first moment of like, you know what? The, the scariest moment I've had in either sub has been on the surface. Um, coming through that channel, which is very narrow. Right. One time in uh, eight foot waves at night, that was terrifying. Compared, oh. compared to being down deep, I feel safe, right? So that's a very, right. things, things are, nothing's happening fast. Everything is, there's, the, you know, there's no boat traffic, there's no, like these jet skis zipping around out here, that worries me more than being at 2,000 feet. Right, right, right. If a yeah. jet ski doesn't see you. And, and they're going so fast and you can't hardly hear them. Other boats, they make a lot of noise. You can hear, but jet skis, too fast and not loud enough. So guys, if you are trying to uh, get some more information, here's the website you can go to. And um, yeah, man, hit them up. It's, it, if it was my birthday, I would have did it. <laughs> if it was my birthday, I would have did it. So I, I, this is going to be on the bucket list, at least, guys, to go into the, the abyss. 
Thanks for watching this video. If this is your first video, try to watch all the other episodes and catch up so you don't miss what's happening next. I guarantee you, it's going to be crazy. Yo.